What up players, it's Warboss Tee Up In This Mug. Welcome to my final installment of how to paint a US Mark II steamer tank for the All Quiet on the Martian Front miniatures game. So as you can see, here's our miniature. We added the transfers in between the videos and then we did a lot of the weathering effects. So the weathering effects we went for were, we went back and we used the interior wash for See if we can, here we go. Interior wash from AK Interactive to dull down the transfer just a little bit and make it a little bit more uniform and not as bright. We also did some chips in Rune Fang Steel. And then we used AK Interactive's, a bunch of AK Interactive products. Uh, this company is great for doing vehicles. So the ones we used are Streaking Grime to create some uh, dried mud and, and rain effects we used oh games workshop astro granite and i don't i do mention this in the in the tutorial but if you it's kind of a mistake that i made one of the things you first things you should do when weathering your vehicle is putting this astro granite onto the tracks i kind of waited and did some of the mud first and then i realized oh it doesn't have the uh, clumped up mud effect that i wanted so take this astro granite or any of the texture paints I started out with sterling mud, but it's all like stuck in the pot for some reason. I uh, got ripped off. And just plaster it on the tracks, then go back over it with some AK Interactive damp earth. And it creates this great, awesome muddy track effects. And the final thing we added right into the port there were some fuel stains. And again, we're using AK Interactive's products. Here we go. The fuel stain weathering effect. Fantastic company. I think they make so much great stuff if you paint lots of vehicles. Um, they're, they're amazing. The amount of realism you can get out of your tanks, like the, uh, the work that you would have to do to reach that same level using just the Games Workshop Citadel paints or, or even any other paints would um, really save you the time if you, if you uh, invest in some AK Interactive products. So thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoy this video. Let me know in the comments below if you have any further questions. Uh, I try to go over everything as clearly as possible, but there might always be something that goes through the cracks. Luckily through these tutorials, I do them in real time so you can kind of follow along. So if this is the finished effect you want to get out of your All Quiet on the Martian Front tanks, then stay tuned and thanks for watching. All right, hey gang, welcome back to my how to paint an American steamer tank video for All Quiet on the Martian Front. As you can see, I took the transfers and I put them on. I got the spade one from the Imperial Guard Cadian Shock Troopers transfer sheet, and I got 326 from the All Quiet on the Martian Front transfer sheet that comes with the game. You will notice that I did not use the TH. I don't know why, when you look at the book, um, it just has the number, so I actually had to cut the transfer where the TH would be. I think you can still see a little bit of T right there, so i just use the back of my hobby knife now to scrape that off. But you'll notice that it is much too clean. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back over, and I'm going to use an old wash brush, and we're going to go back over this guy with some interior wash, enamel wash, for the interior by AK Interactive. And what this is going to do is just really uh, darken it down without and dirty it up without making it look um, artificial, as sometimes transfers have a tendency to look. So we're just going to kind of splotch some of this mud on it or this, this kind of dirty, muddied look on it. We might as well just give another even distribution of the wash around. And uh, for the transfers, I used Microsol and Microset, which are fantastic products. And uh, you should definitely check them out if you have not used those things before. Okay, so while that starts to dry, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into all of the creases and all of those areas and we're going to use AK Interactive's 
streaking grime. And shake it up. And pop that baby open. Now with this, we want to make sure that the grime goes in all of the creases uh, where all the panels kind of meet each other because this is supposed to represent uh, dirt and stuff that accumulates on the battlefield. So we're going to just kind of distribute it as evenly as we can. Um, if you notice that it gets like a little too thick, like right now at the very beginning, there is a little too much um, on my paintbrush there. You can just go back over with some AK Interactive White Spirit and what that will do is really uh, spread out the uh, enamel, I guess, pigment and give you a better distribution of it. White Spirit is great. It's also, White Spirit, um, I didn't know this, but it's great for cleaning your brushes. So a lot of these um, products, especially like the damp earth that we're about to use, you'll notice it um, leaves this really horrible, like nasty finish on your brushes. So just go back over it with uh, some White Spirit by AK Interactive and you'll notice that it clears right up. So clean your brush, no problem. Okay, so I'm also using a brush that I don't use to paint because I noticed that AK Interactive products, these uh, enamel kind of weathering effects really kind of trash your brushes. So you don't want to use a brush that you use to paint, especially something like detail. We're going to take this streaking grime though, we're going to distribute it anywhere where one panel meets another kind of to show like the accumulated grime in certain areas. My my All Quiet on the Martian front tanks are fighting in a heavy trenched war zone, heavily trenched war zone in America. So they're going to have these deposits of grime all over. You know what I mean? They're going to have uh, mud, they're going to have wear and tear. And I think it's an awesome effect. And so that's why I use it. So I'm going in between the armor plates here on the side. You'll notice. What I'm also going to do is go down. Make sure we go down both sides, of course. Trying to stay in the creases here. We're also going to hit all of these large rivet areas. And we're going to pull the grind down to kind of show dried uh, mud. The, uh, the effect of like dried grime as it kind of streaks down the armor. You add a little bit of, of white spirit to soften the edges like I just did. And it'll create a very, very cool effect. Let's see if we can get a good good close-up on this. So first I'm gonna just cover the rivet and then I'm gonna pull down like this. And then I'm gonna wash off my brush so none of that gets into the white spirit. I'm going to get into the white spirit and just pull the edges, soften all of these edges so the grime doesn't look as painted on. Okay, I made a little bit of a mistake there, it's no problem. Uh, white spirit is kind of like your delete button. So if you don't like an effect that you just did, just get a lot of white spirit and just kind of mash it around until the effect is what you want. Last part of the streaking grime, we're going to
touch on is the pieces of the door. Now you can also do this if you want with uh, Games Workshop products. I would say Dryad Bark with some Lamian Medium would be great. It'll create this dark earthy brown that uh, can really kind of imitate this streak and grind. But I seriously think every every painter out there should get some AK Interactive products for their for their toolkit, especially if you do vehicles. Oh my gosh, AK Interactive weathering effects. Like I thought that Forge World weathering powders were the top of the industry kind of thing, but Man, when I first started working with these weathering effects from AK Interactive, it was like just out of this world. So, so different. It's like a whole different level of, uh, of effects that you can achieve. Hey, um, I'm only also, I'm also, sorry about that, I'm also only just now getting into all of this AK Interactive weathering effects. So if you have a favorite product from AK Interactive, I'd love to hear what it is because I'm looking on eBay, I'm ordering from their, their actual store, and uh, I would love to hear what your favorite products from AK Interactive are. All right, so there's that. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do some very minimal chipping and these are heavy score chipping effects that uh, the chipping we've already done that you can kind of see on the back panels there is to show the paint that has uh, been kind of, the, the green paint that's been kind of scored to the iron underneath. What we're gonna try to achieve next with our chipping is where it gets scratched down to the bare metal. So the heaviest chipping effects. And what we're gonna use for that is Rune Fang Steel. So we got our Rune Fang steel here, and what we're going to do is we're going to take a smaller brush, so I'm working with a fine detail brush from Citadel, and you can also use any really bright silver from any other range if you're not using Citadel paints. Uh, the goal is you want the brightest silver you can get, and what we're going to do is basically just put the paint on the edge of our brush. I'm gonna wipe about 50% of it off and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back in to these uh, scores that we made earlier and we're not gonna add too much. You don't wanna line the whole thing but you wanna just get a little bit of this metallic paint on the edges of anything that would normally have lots of wear and tear on it. So I'm talking like hinges, uh, the edges of these panels and these hatches that fly open. Definitely the center because those are going to be all scratched up from troopers running in and out, smashing it around. And let's look at here, the turrets. Definitely just a little bit. You want to just create the illusion that it's banging around on the battlefield getting chips and uh, the, the less you do, I think the more realistic it's going to end up. But you do want to create a little for this kind of cinematic feel to your tanks. And again, you want to be very careful about how much you put, taking a look at my model tank, or my test tank here, for reference. These are the kind of effects that you want to add just enough of so that whoever comes to pick up your tank and or look at it while you're playing with it will notice it, but you're not going to notice it really from across the table unless you're looking very hard. Okay. 
and we're looking for the areas that would have the most wear and tear. And you can also add, if you want, just a little bit of a random scratch here or there. That's fine. Uh, you want to make sure you have enough that it looks like a scratch, though, and not just some some paint that you rubbed on. So here you can see that I put a little bit on these panel sections, uh, a lot on this hatch over here, and uh, just a couple of scratches on the rivets. And this side, we're gonna add just a little bit to the front there. Maybe some on these rivets. Just a little bit on these panel dividers. And the majority gonna go on this door. There, there you go. We're almost done, we're just about done. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our damp earth. So you definitely wanna go with a, a brush you're, you're not gonna be doing detail work with or one that you use to do these weathering effects with. And the product we're gonna use for this is AK Interactive's Damp Earth. Right there. So, so what we're going to be doing is just um, putting putting this effect like on the tracks, painting the tracks, and really just um, kind of seeing how much we can push the effects. So we're going to be taking some some of this uh, mud effects and we're gonna leave little clumps on the tracks in certain areas and you know we're really gonna try to do do as much as we can to create a realistic muddy looking trench fighting tank So I usually like to go one at a time. Also, because this effect is going to only be seen on the top, you don't really need to do it on the bottom. Uh, but you do want to make sure you get all of the tracks, all of the treads that are going to be touching the ground. And you also want to make sure you get the side of the treads. So even though I'm not painting the flat of the bottom of the treads there, I'm going to be painting the sides. and the upper part since the mud is going to be splattering all over the place. Just like that. Okay, and for the top areas, if you can, we're going to try and get a little a little splotch of the effect that we can leave to dry. You could also get some sand if you want from your modeling box or from your uh, flocking box and put that in there as well to create a kind of clumped up looking uh, effect. Or if you've got the Games Workshop texture paints, some sterling mud is a fantastic product that you can use. In fact, why don't we use some of that right now? I'm gonna pop that open, get some of that sterling mud, and uh, the tool that I use for for getting texture paints out is a coffee stirrer, which you can get at any Starbucks. Okay, I don't know if my sterling mud is dried out in the pot or if it's uh, a defect of the way it's made, but it's being very difficult to work with right now. So, hmm, I'll 
I have to find another texture paint that I can use. Well, uh, give me a second, we'll be right back. Hey right, folks, sorry about that. The sterling mud was being really uh, difficult to work with, so I've got this astro granite here that we can use, and it's uh, just as good, especially when you coat it over with the uh, damp earth effects. But yeah, this is this is more the consistency it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be really easy to get out with your uh, with your coffee stirrer. So all I'm going to do is this actually I should have gone back and done this step first. I just really wanted to get to this mud effects, I guess. But um, I'm just going to take my coffee stirrer and just kind of smooth randomly. We're going to spread this astro granite all over. And you can use this, like I said, with any of the Games Workshop texture paints. You could use, if you have a sterling mud that is working, you could use that. Um, you could even use Lustria Undergrowth or any other color. It doesn't really matter because what you're going to be coloring it with is the AK Interactive product. And this part is really up to you, the artist, like how much or how little you use. Definitely got a lot here for, for my tank, so I'm going to see if I can take some of it off, maybe even it out. Uh, you don't want to look like it's pasted on though, so you want to give your mud a kind of randomized look. But if you don't want to do the mud on the tracks, if you want to be able to see the tracks, then uh, you definitely can skip this part of the tutorial. Like if you're doing an urban battle, you might not have these. Uh, you might not have all this, especially if it's like a dry urban battle, lots of concrete. Um, you're fighting through the city streets. I'm going for like a, a wet, muddy World War I trench, trenches in uh, Europe kind of look, but here in America. I guess because in the All Quiet on the Martian Front, in the fluff and fiction when the Martians invade America, the American cities try to build trenches to kind of keep them at bay and keep their citizens safe. Of course it doesn't work. Uh, the, the tripods seem to be able to maneuver through them without too much difficulty, but um, it also gives the the game a very World War I kind of feel, even though it's technically like a science fiction alternate history kind of game. You still get that uh, flavor to it. Tank battles, lots of infantry for the Americans, uh, that kind of thing. Okay, so that's about all of the astro granite that we're going to be adding. And again, I went with a, a more is more kind of approach for for the mud because I went so simplistic with the paint scheme. I wanted to do a lot of uh, a lot of weathering and the trench effect is really what I was going for. So the reason why I kind of regretted doing this first is because now the Astro Granite needs to have some time to to dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry and uh, when we come back we are going to finish this off by basically just taking the AK Interactive wet mud or damp earth and uh, coloring this Astro Granite gray color into more of a muddy trenches kind of brown, dark earthy brown. So again, you don't really need the effects on the bottom. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be back. I'm gonna let this dry, I'm gonna go off and do something else for a little while. And uh, when we come back, we'll finish off this American Mark II steamer tank for All Quiet on the Martian Front. Hey gang, so we've given our Astro Granite some time to dry and now we're going to go back in and finish it off. Like I said, you want to make sure you've got your white spirit handy because after you put your brush through this effect, you're going to have a lot of uh, cleaning to do. So we're just taking our AK Interactive Damp Earth and we're going back over all 
of these areas on the track. Important thing is that you don't get, you know, like just watch out that you don't get too much of this mud effect on the rest of your tank. You've got the um, enamel wash to really show the weathering on the tank and you don't have to do too much mud splatter because you've got so much grit and grime on the actual tracks themselves that you don't want to detract from your paint job. I've seen lots of tanks, I don't want to say ruined, but really their paint jobs kind of get detracted by the amount of weathering and um, just like dirt and mud that the artist put on the actual tracks themselves. And uh, I don't think you need too much of it. It's not just the tracks themselves, but they would put like the mud like um, splattering up the whole side of of the tank. So you can do a little bit of that right here at the bottom, but I don't think you want to do too much. You don't want to go like halfway up. I think just right here at the bottom where the tracks would naturally kick up mud is fine. Again, AK Interactive makes some of the best weathering products, I think, on the market. Just fantastic stuff. It actually looks like it's, you know, going to be, it's going to, when it dries, the gloss effect is going to stay a little bit. It's going to create this look of fresh, wet mud. It's going to be really awesome to look at. And it's going to be really bad on your brushes. So you want to make sure if you're using a brush that you spent any amount of money on that you clean it properly with the white spirit. Or what you can do is go to any hobby store or arts and crafts store and buy a bag of super cheapo brushes for a couple bucks. Um, when I was doing my Imperial Guard terrain square for uh, Igbeer's competition, I actually bought a bag of really, really cheapo brushes for I think something like five bucks. And it was so, it was so good. It, the, the brushes weren't very good, but they were perfect for what I was doing, which is just, you know, messing up all the bristles to be able to do the uh, paint on some really nice weather effects on a big piece of terrain square. So in that case, if you're not doing fine detail work where you need a good brush that can keep the point and um, not worry about the effects getting into the ferrule, which is the metal part where the bristles meet the brush, then definitely spend a couple bucks, get a giant bag of disposable brushes and use them for your weathering. I think you terrain painters out there definitely uh, know about that, right? Okay, so here we go. While I was blabbering on, I was able to finish the mud effects for my tank. And because I painted the mud effects on the side as well, it's going to create the illusion when you put this tank on the board that the weathering mud effects go all the way down to the bottom. Even though the bottom tracks are not at all muddied, they're going to look that way from across the board. And there you have it, players, how to paint an American Mark II steamer tank from Alien Dungeons All Quiet on the Martian Front game. Um... Again, this is just the Mark II tank. If you want to do a Mark III tank, it's basically the same principles that I went over with in here. The only thing is you've got a larger canopy to play with because it's got this big area on top as well as these side, side sponsons. So we put the number here on the side. You've got the sponson on the side over here. And uh, instead of a spade, we had a star, the good old American star. Oh, one more thing I want to, I do want to add, one final effect that we can do together is on the sides of these tanks, you've got these little openings, these little port openings, and I like to think of them as, as um, like little fuel vents or, or exhaust ports or something on the side that's going to see a lot of wear and uh, possibly have, you know, different kind of machine fluids. Uh, leaking out of it throughout the battle. So I found this uh, another great AK interactive effect If I can find it called fuel stains 
Here it is, AK Interactive Fuel Stains, and you can see it creates this awesome oily, shiny, grimy effect down the side of the armor plates of your vehicles. So I would use this in the um, front, or the, the fuel area, I used it on my um, Bane Blade tank. I used it in all sorts of different areas. It's, it's a fantastic little effect. It has kind of this like caramelly looking color to it, which is really, really nice, especially because it's got this kind of gloss to it when you apply it. And it really does look like, like, like gasoline. So I'm gonna just paint it here in this port and just drag it down. You don't need too much. I definitely put too much on my brush, so I'm gonna even it out and wipe it off the side. So you're going to have this kind of glossy, uh, caramel looking stain coming right out of this port, which is fantastic. Alright, you can also put it anywhere else you want, but because these tanks ran mo uh, mainly, mostly, on steam power, they wouldn't have too much gasoline, but I like to think that there was uh, some fuel going to the front to power the guns or something, so that's where you get some of that spillage. All right, and that is it. Here we've got all three of my tanks lined up. When the AK Interactive Damp Earth dries, we're gonna see that the mud kind of turns a little bit darker, and it's gonna be a little bit more uniform with these other two that I did, but check that out. That is a very awesome looking squad right there. Very war-torn, war beaten. They've all got the appropriate markings and weathered look to them. So thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed this uh, little tutorial and stay tuned for more All Quiet on the Martian Front as well as all the other projects we've got coming up such as Spookytoberfest and all of the thank you videos to my July Painting Challenge participants. Latest players!